check out the website jfresh.co.uk what's good live in the place right now the number one uk dancehall artist he's killing the scene with his rhythms he's killing the clubs and the raves as well want to say hi to stylo g what's going on bruv well i'm one brother good day man see ya uh, see ya listen bro thanks for coming down to portsmouth tonight i know the weather outside yeah. was less than nice the journey down here was yeah. pretty crazy but you made it down and the energy that we saw from you on stage mm. props man Boy, you don't know, even if it does, like, style G, my philosophy in music, mm. even if it's 10 people in the room, I always have to make sure I get their attention and bring across the point, and that's music. You understand me? Letting them know, like, this is style G. Mm. There's always new people, new fans every day. You understand me? You never can think you're too big to do this or too big, you understand me? Different fan base, so right away when I go on stage, I just know that I have double work to do. You know, mm. I have to grab them attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, this, the weather is bad outside, but I still get them on their toes, and that's the main thing. Exactly, yeah. man. To people who are, who are new to you as an artist, mm -hmm. there's always, uh, I always like to give a little bit of background. So, musical kind of heritage and where you're from, and early influences, I was very happy to hear the likes of Super Cat, yeah. Shabba, Foundation Artists. So, talk to us uh, very briefly about the kind of how you got into music and your introduction to music as a young guy. How we get into music is by my dad, Poison Chap. Mm -hmm. He had a track called Press Up and you know, blow up all over the world. He like re big recording artist back in the 90s. So, in the, my father, he was an artist, so he was around R. L. Big Man, them, the super captain, the big. So, mm -hmm. that was my influence at the time, you know, as a 7, 8 year old, 9 year old growing up. You know, my dad bringing me to the studio with all these big names. So That's sick. I had to make you sight at the time, you understand? Yeah, that yeah. was not like my vision, that was not like my dream. So, from there, uh, you know, um, things just start. You know, I start going to secondary school, and then my dad passed away when I was, when I um, when I reached thirteen. So from there, you know, I moved to the UK two years after, and that's my musical journey. I just decided, you know, I'm gonna continue his legacy and continue keep mm -hmm. on letting the, the star shine. And in terms of your music, you've been so prolific over the years, but especially now, there's so much material coming out from you. Mm -hmm. Original stuff and also features. Features. Uh, yeah. Recently, the likes of Drew Blue and, and also the Jody Connor track, yeah. which is getting a lot of heat on major radio right now. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a little thing about the Jody Connor track. <laughs> on TV. Yeah. Yeah. What you like? it, it looked like you had a nice working relationship going on there. Things are cool. Well, 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 the way, like, yeah, the working relationship was on point. And that's good because it's not every female artist you're gonna go in the studio mm -hmm. with. Some of them stuck up, some of them feel like they're too much of a diva. But she was like, you understand me? We just gear her toward the Jamaican yard lingo and she just, it just bingo. Mm -hmm. And she started work with it, you understand me? So the, the, the chemistry, the chemistry music was there straight away. Was there straight away. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So I got an next track with her as well. So we're probably just gonna buy some whole album together, you know. Me and her alone, just lock them. Lots of no contact nice. time in the studio, yeah? Yeah. Late <laughs> night sessions, yeah? Shh, don't say nothing. <laughs> no, but she's a nice girl, really. She's a nice girl and big singer, so mm. like, that was good working with Jody Connor, Drew Blue, you know, youth from South East London, UK rapper. You know, the UK rap scene is getting bigger now, so mm. you understand me? I'm just, I've been doing features for a while, but it's just because I'm hitting the right ones now. You understand me? The ones that make sense. I'm talking about the new material coming out, the new mixtape as well, featuring some crazy collaborations, yeah. things like that. Tell us a little bit more information about that. I've got a mixtape that almost finished called Feature and Strategy. Are we going to see it before the new year? Um, no. Okay. If you see it before the new year, it's not going to be new. You have to wait until the new year. Okay. Then it will be new. If you get it before the new year, it will be an old CD. Mm. So after the new year, I'm going to release that one. I've got songs on it from like the Jewel Blue track, um, the Jody kind of track, it's going to be like, you know, like enough tracks. There's a feature strategy, me featuring most of the, the, the artists from the seeds, Egyptian, you know, I got like Kano. Chipmunk, Kano, Cash Tastic, yeah, no, that one will come from. Rich is on it, is Big fan of Rich. Yeah, so Crazy. it's just like strategy, just showing them, you know, leading dance all UK artists mm -hmm. and, just getting that that chemistry with all the acts in the UK and you know and, you know I, I go for the clubs I make club music most of the time so you get me me and them hooking up just gonna create good impact. 
So we're looking forward to that mixtape in early 2013. Definitely. And it leads us on to some Twitter questions. Every time I get to interview someone, I like to put it out on Twitter. We mm -hmm. get people's responses. Always got to say, I have no control over these questions. These are questions that people have put on Twitter. So wow. they might be personal. They might be, they might be yeah. I don't know, but we'll go from there. First and foremost, obviously, to follow you, to get hold of you at Twitter, mm -hmm. it is at StyleOG. S-T-Y-L-O-G-E-E. -E. Exactly. And firstly, we've got a, a message from Batman Beat saying, what producers can we expect to see on your mixtape? You spoke about that. Um, boy, I got um, Jay Scott. That's a big, um, that's Carter producer. Mm -hmm. um, He's, he's doing a lot now, he's doing most of popcorn I've done. I've done, a, I've done a track with him and I've got, I've got Focus, he's the one I've done now, the Drew Bull track. And I'm, I'm doing a lot now with a lot of different producers. I've got Pyramistic, we've got some Dirty Dutch, Dutch team working on. But yeah, there's a lot of producers feet on most of the tracks because I don't really tie myself to one producer because mm. I produce myself as well. So I like to venture out. So we're kind of finishing it up. No, I don't want to give away too much of the secret. I just want to hear it and people just be like, yeah, that's bad. Oh, is that from that producer? Uh, next question is from Lucy Darrell saying, uh, she knows you're a big fan of Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. She wants to know, what is your personal best time over 100 metres? My personal best. My personal best. <laughs> I assume she means running. No, no, I used to run for, <laughs> I used to run for Calabar High School because uh, I've done well in track and field. And my personal best time when I was about 14, I was running like 12, 12, 64, 12, 6. I'm impressed. I don't even think I could run 100 meters now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, actually. But no, that's, that's wicked. That's wicked. So, so if I should get back in the blocks now, I'll probably hit, you know, I'll probably thump in down the 11. You know. you, you're giving you give Bolt a run for his money? No, I can't give Bolt a run for his money. Then, uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to try to put myself in that category. <laughs> if Bolt wants to test for the mic, then yeah. But not on the track. Not off the board. <laughs> Shark sound crash, not track crash. Yeah. Keep it here. Yeah, uh, next question on Twitter comes from uh, Jamie Thompson saying, any future collaborations with Sneakbo? You know what? Yesterday I was in my house and I was like, me and Sneakbo need to do like a new track. Because the Call Me A Yardie was a remix. And that went, that done well. You know, my, my voice and his voice kind of connect on a track together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely in the pipeline. Wicked. And the final question is from at Custom. Mm. Uh, saying, you covered it a little bit earlier, but saying, how did you start out, but how did you see the signs of recognition for the music you're making? I've seen the signs of recognition when, um, when, when I was watching the telly and, um, and Glamour Kid came on and I was putting in the work and, you know, it was a proper video, proper release and it was out there and I was like, if he can do it, I can do it, mm. you understand me? So, it's people that inspire me to like give me the job to let me know that yo, there's a possibility of making dancehall music in the UK and creating the same impact as if, as if you were in Jamaica. Mm. So yeah, that's what kind of just give me the job. And uh, one tweet or tweet I should say I've, I've taken from your your feed recently. Okay. I love it. It says I've been doing this independent with my team for years, creating a mad impact with club bangers and non-stop bookings. And just a big up to Richie. It's our time. So, as an artist, like I said, so much material coming out, it must be such an exciting period for you. Things are going crazy. Mm -hmm. From the ground up, you're building yourself, mm -hmm. and then you're starting to reap the benefits. So, for 2013, you know, what kind of what kind of plans are out there? What kind of things you'd like to tick off the list and say, I did that, I worked with that guy? Boy, you know, you know, won that award. You know the, next, the next step from now is like releasing major records as in, on bigger scales. You know, we saw the Jody Connor thing. Mm. That was just like a little test of. So you see Jody Connor, you're gonna see probably see Tiny Temple next, probably see Lambert next. And that's 2013, that's all he's gonna get like we're gonna be working with bigger producers. I'm gonna go in up the ladder straight, like same way. I'm got a European tour coming up, American, like I'm going to America doing a tour in America. So I'm looking forward to all of that, like adding up together. So I'm, my, my brain is really excited mm. right now. It's overwhelming, but I'm just controlling it, you get me? Like, just putting in the work still, doing my shows, making sure I'm on, like, I'm on point with everything that I do, making, creating the banner still. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 2013, I don't, I'll just, I'm just going to let the music speak for itself, you understand me? And you, there ain't no limits when it comes to me and my, my music and what I do. So, style is just going to be rising and rising, you understand me? 
no going down, no going to the side, or no just up, up, up constant up, progression. Up, constant up, progression. Wicked. Yeah. Uh, finally, we mentioned your Twitter address, but also there's the website. People can can yeah. get there. They can buy the records. They can check yeah. out the club dates. Yeah, my my, my website is stylogy.co.uk. You get me. Once you type in stylogy, you Google me, you see everything. They no A, no B, no C, no D. Style G. So once you type in my name, you'll see the website. If you want dub plates, bookings, everything through there, Twitter is the same. So if you don't, if you ain't got a Twitter, you can just go to the website. Link me, I'm there. You get me? Easy to find. I'm, a, I'm an easy guy to find, but you understand me? Wicked. And you've been a really easy guy to talk to as well, so. Yeah, of course. You know, I've done so much interviews, and you know, Jay Fresh, you understand where I'm coming from. So everything's set. No difficulties. You understand me? I mean, you play some dub plate downstairs. Nah. Someone now them dub plate and them run out of their mouth. Who are we, we talking about? Who are we talking about? Huh? I'm not. You was playing some dub, yeah. right? What kind, of artist, what kind of artist are we talking about? <laughs> you was playing. Yo, Corey, what was he playing? Dead man. <laughs> you might play some artist with. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Deceased. Yes. And he's playing them on dub plate. I don't know how you done it. That's me. <laughs> That's just show you he's a supporter of reggae music and yeah. dance art. You understand me? Some DJs out there, they big DJ and they, they never pay for a dub plate or get a dub plate. This guy supports dance and reggae music. If we got like 10 of you around these cuts, we'll be getting good. bigger. Good, good job, good job. Keep it up, keep it up. Nice one. Yeah.